Good evening. Uh, call this meeting of the Queen Anne's County Board of Education to order January the 20th, 2021. Can we stand for the pledge? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Board members have had a chance to see the agenda to have a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, we've had a chance to look at our minutes for January the 13th, uh, open meeting. Has everybody had a chance to review those? A motion for approval? So moved. Second. Have a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, passes. Thank you. Okay, going into discussions. I guess the first thing we'll be going open is uh, Dr. Kane, opening of schools. Absolutely. So right now we continue to um, have challenges with staffing. We have additional um, employees who uh, have opted for um, to have their doctors write them out on an ADA accommodation. So we're about 10 more than we were the last time we met. We've had a few more resignations. Um, so our staffing situation is not improving, but we continue to work diligently to um, get those classes covered. We right now have gone over schedules for a hybrid instruction for each level for elementary, middle and high school. So I believe that we have a, a, a solid plan. We also have, um, as you well know, told teachers that they did not have to all come back to the building. While our metrics, our health metrics are improving because we've gone from about 14 a couple of weeks ago to about 10.4 right now, um, or maybe 10.1. So our health metrics are improving. So we do anticipate within the next few weeks, you know, as we continue to um, review the situation at schools that things will be improving. So I have asked uh, employees to sort of be on the, have the heads up that uh, that is coming. I don't know when, have not given a date, but I have let them know that they, may, they do not have to all report on the 25th as originally planned. What I have asked is that teachers work with their principals to ensure that the needs of students are met as we do small group instruction. What I'd like to say uh, for all of our employees that are listening, that's not a, uh, you know, a, a, a reason to say, I absolutely am not coming in the building because the fact of the matter is that we have to teach children and we will be teaching some children in person. That means some teachers are going to need to be in buildings. Unless there is an ADA accommodation or a teacher is on leave of absence or something like that, then you, when your principal calls, you will need to come into the building. Does that mean 100% of teachers will be in the building? No, but there will need to be teachers and instructional staff, uh, support staff to be in buildings to support the children who have who been identified as priority and, and need to be in buildings. So I can't make that any more clear. And I have given principals the authority to call on teachers to come into the buildings as they need them. Um, and, and I really am counting on all of our instructional staff to cooperate rate and going in when called. So, so really, you're giving them flexibility, but the principals will be calling people in, hopefully everybody, but will come in as soon as they can, and we're just going to support, and you're, I mean, as you're a superintendent, support the principals because we need Correct. teachers back, because when we go back to the next uh, level, well, they have to be in school. Correct. They'll have to be there. Yeah. So I just won't put too much, I mean, principals are doing a, a good job, and they're taking on a lot of responsibility. But, uh, you know, we, you know, not we, you need to back them up as far oh, as. Oh, and, and that is why I'm saying what I'm yeah. saying. And, and I've had some conversations with principals today, and I want to put it out there for all of our employees because I know that I have said it, principals are saying it, but I want to say it again. So absolutely, I'm there to back principals up, but I, I don't think that that is even necessary because we do have a contingency of teachers who are volunteering to come into buildings and teachers who are anxious to get in buildings. So I am not overly concerned with that. I think that we've got that covered. There was also a concern about uh, broadband and having all teachers in the buildings at once and being online and, and doing Google Meets and that. And 
And just from our technology office, Mr. Combs has advised that the process for getting our district to uh, 2G, 2G is, is moving forward. So we're hoping that we have another update on this Friday. And and uh, hopefully that will be moving forward within the next week or so. Because yeah, any other board members, correct me if I'm wrong, we talked about this in November or something. We were using about half 500, and he said the 2G would get us well within our realm of what we needed, but it had to go through some routers in the state to go up to Baltimore and come back, and now I understand the writer might be in Chestertown or something. But uh, you know, we I think that's been authorized. I forget what the expenditure was to the pay for that. The cost was authorized. It was $100 more a month. And, uh, you know, as long as we can get this up. But mm -hmm. So I just wanted to let you know that he's working on that and uh, that looks like it's moving forward. Does he think that could be done by this month? Or, I'm sorry, in February sometime? He'll have an update this Friday. Okay, so you can update everybody mm -hmm. then. Okay, thank you. So for staffing, you know, otherwise we're working on transportation and, and that's moving forward uh, quite well. Principals are sharing the um, student lists that are ready for small groups, so we'll go ahead and move forward with that. Some students are um, actually doing some one-on-one -on -one for um, students, some students with uh, severe needs with IEPs already. So we're moving forward. Dr. Kane, a quick question and thank you. This, it's, um this is good news and, and, and I'm glad our metrics are down. But a quick question about the 10 additional that have applied. Are those on top of the nine that had applied the 34. that we talked about last time or is this now they, they're on it? The nine that had applied before are now on the, the 34 that were, this is on top of that. Right, but there were nine that had applied also last week when we talked about it. This so. is that nine. Okay, okay, great, thank you. I also know with opening of schools, a vaccination thing, because I was, matter of fact, up at Centerville today, and it, you know, it's been a little confusing off and on. Uh, you had an appointment, then you didn't, and then some of this is rolling. And of course, the amount of vaccines, the health department has no control over how much they get. Um, but really what I want to say is it looked like we had a fair number of, sta of teachers up there today uh, in line, but there wasn't enough. I think Michelle can probably see that. But, um, you know, we're, it, I hope it's going to get rolling a lot quicker than it did right now. And uh, there are always going to be some hiccups in here, but um, I think I think we're going to, it's going to get done. It's just going to take time. We request a certain amount of vaccine each week, mm -hmm. Tuesdays. Friday night about 8 o'clock is when we find out what we're going to get for the next week. It's never what we ask for. It's never what we anticipate our clinics needing. So that has been the problem. Today's issue, we have no control over the system that can, does the appointments. That's the state system. So when we canceled because of shortage of vaccine, that system continued to send out reminder, which confused people. I don't have an appointment. I do have an appointment. So a lot showed up, and it, it, today was a, just a very big confusing mess for both our staff and for those folks who thought they had appointments who didn't have appointments. Mm -hmm. So we're working on it. I understand. Oh, I, I <laughs> sympathize with the thing. One thing I might suggest is that all our in, staff and employees have their badges with them, have their ID with them, that you know, because that your member or your staff member of the Board of Education, not that that's going to get you in anywhere, but at least can sit there and say, I am a teacher, I am you know, a that bus driver. That would help tremendously because when we ask and send a link to say it's for your employees, we do not want your spouses and your children and your neighbors signing up as well because those clinics are meant for a certain population. So when we see people's spouses showing up or on that list, we will have to cancel you. We are going to get stricter about doing that. So um, I saw the list. I saw a lot of spouses on there. They need to come off mm -hmm. when you schedule again. That's our update, and I guess uh, we'll be updating that more all the time, and I guess HR has updates on that if our staff needs to find out what's going on. It's, and you know, it's, 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 you're dealing with a state program, limited supplies, it's, you know, it's, 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 it's tough, but, uh, you know, I hope we, hope we get it done and hope they get it working a little smoother. We're praying I it'll make our jobs a lot, a lot easier <laughs> and people will be a lot nicer. Right. Okay. Is that pretty much for school? So st staffing, I, I know we have some challenges there, but you feel right this present we are coping 
with it that it's not a well right now because we have small groups right um, we're, we're working hard but I, you know I'm optimistic that hopefully the numbers keep going the right way you know down our vaccinations start speeding up and the people get more comfortable uh, because I mean this is very bad and challenging, but I just feel what we're doing in our schools and what we've had over the last years, how we're sanitizing, how we'll be doing things and protecting our people, our students and everybody. Um, it, it's, it's, you know, it's what we can, we have to do. I just, okay. Do we have any subs um, trained yet on Schoology? Are they, is that moving forward at all? I don't know that subs, have subs been trained on Schoology? I don't think so. Okay. And they get trained with they get trained within the school using the content specialist and the schoology specialist that we set up to work with within the school. So when they get picked up, they'll get trained. How long does that training take? Well, it depends on how how much expertise you have with technology. I mean, we talking a week, two days. A week. It could be. It, it depends on where you are on the pendulum of knowing technology. If if you come from one segment of the population, just finished college, it could be a couple of hours. If you're on the other end of the pendulum, it might take a day or two. Month. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm on a day or two. I understand that. But I can tell you, flipping in and out my my two kids, their school working with it. The more I work with it, the more comfortable I get with maneuvering through it uh -huh. and finding what I need to find. So the hardest part for me is when I see you didn't turn this assignment in. Yes, I did. You have to go to power school. And that's where the grade is. That's the hardest part for me to make the connection. But once I've figured that out, I've just got both screens going and I'm keeping an eye on, on both. The more you work with it, the better it gets. But once we move into our small groups at the end of January and then February, we make some decisions. A, a week to get our uh, substitute teachers trained, knowing that we're, when, we, when we find out what date we're actually coming back into school. As soon as the principal notifies them, they have a phone, well, I know if I am, and then the principal notifies them, then they can get a date to come right. in. So, I mean, you know, some reasonable time. I mean, because that's something we, you know, when we get, when we hit the ground running, we want to be running. So that's happening now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. They're coming in for small group uh -huh. for teachers. My principals are calling and they're setting up the date, date and time that they need to come in. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for opening the schools? Okay. Update on our clay target team update. Good evening, President Smith, members of the board, and Dr. Kane. For the record, my name is Carla Pullen. I'm the interim chief operating officer. I just wanted to bring you an update on some of the questions that came up last week when we were talking about the Clay Target team. The first thing is insurance. So we had discussed the need for something higher than a million dollar insurance policy. And what the league has been able to come back with so far is an updated certificate. It still shows a $1 million limit per occurrence with a $2 million aggregate. There is no umbrella that's able to be had at this point. What Mr. Connolly, the proposed coach, has been told by the league is that they have sought out an increase in a $10 million policy. They're currently waiting for an updated certificate of insurance. If that comes through, it's something that we'll definitely review. I have not seen that personally yet. The same exists at Sudlersville Skeet. At this point, they have a million dollar certificate of insurance that they've presented for us. So we know that they have that on file and with them, there is no aggregate. I reached out to Mabe to see if they could find out how insurance like this is handled in other states, and they are going to do that. They're going to get back to us. What they did caution us, though, is that it would not be a true apples to apples comparison, um, potentially, that there are other states that may not be self-insured as we are, so therefore there may be some differences in terms of amounts of coverage, the ability for larger corporations to handle things that we necessarily wouldn't as a self-insured um, entity and that many other states um, gun laws and the culture of use also may affect 
how acceptable it is with that particular state. And of course, with Maryland, we do have stricter gun laws. So um, they will get back to us about that and how that's handled elsewhere. MAPE had requested review of a sexual abuse and molestation policy just to see if it was adequately covered. And at this time, the league has indicated to Mr. Conley that they don't plan to further develop a policy that they were running into some legal issues in getting that together and they felt it was best to forego that at this point. I spoke with Department of Natural Resources and at their urging, the Assistant Barrett Commander of the Maryland State Police here in Centerville. And right now there is no restriction in Maryland who is able to transport firearms. That's provided that the person is able to legally, for legal reasons, transport the firearm. But it would be an unloaded shotgun, the back seat of the vehicle, and it would be going to and from a range to a residence. They didn't foresee any issues with that. So in having some more detailed discussions with MABE over the last week, the risk management officer for MABE has indicated, and he gave this in writing, that he is not feeling that the school system is the most appropriate place to have this type of activity. Their concerns are number one, that although this would be running under Ken Island High School domain, it's essentially an outside club. And therefore they're concerned about a lack of control that the school system would have over necessarily coaching staff, over some of the activities that were happening, um, especially at the range that aren't necessarily under our purview and whether or not that location remained consistent. What he advised was for us to take a look at the missions and the goals of Queen Anne's County Public Schools, which of course is to educate students first and then to see if we felt that that furthered those goals and those missions. And stringent safety, he felt, was not an area where we should take the path, path of least resistance. That accidents can occur anywhere, the likelihood of a catastrophic accident in this type of activity would potentially be greater. The other thing that we've struggled with since we talked last week was just the development of the MOU. And at this time, Mr. Connolly is not suggesting that they form a club. So that MOU would go directly to him. And that even brought up with Mabe some concerns about his own personal liability. And that's something that we've reached out to Mr. Connolly about um, just in today's society. If something were to go wrong, he likely would be named as a responsible party as well. So that's where we've gotten in last week, and I'd be happy to take other questions. We'll provide updates as soon as we can. Um, the insurance piece is something that we are definitely still waiting to see. Any questions? No questions, thanks. When, the one thing I would have is, the time frame, the, uh, my understanding when we had the presentation was that they're looking to have this done by February or something. That, I mean, that's when they want to get I, in and get I going. Believe so. Registration so. would begin in February. I don't believe that with their schedule that was provided by Mr. Connolly, mm -hmm. they are looking to begin practice the week of April 3rd. Okay, so so what? I guess what I'm asking is if, if the time's going to run out before we cross the finish line and we don't think we're having these answers, we should probably inform everybody as soon as possible if a, if it's something that we think we can obtain and it's not any obstacles that we can't overcome, then, you know, but I just, I don't like to sit there and have something be defeated because we run out of time. Right. Let's say, okay, it's going to work or no, there's too many obstacles and, you know, not wait till midnight and say, uh, you know, don't come to breakfast tomorrow morning. Right. No, There's understood. no harm in trying to get these puzzle pieces together and starting next year. I mean, uh, well, we already tried that last through. year. I know we had COVID. We tried that last year, and you know, I just, I don't. <laughs> I don't think timing is is the issue. Okay. I think the the. Um, 
the strong suggestion from MABE, our insurance carrier, is, is significant. Um, I think that there is a reason why there are no public schools involved, and that's clear. Um, but I also think that there are some possible alternatives to, you know, that will allow the students to go ahead and, and have the club, but it's just not under public school. So, you know, we want to do due diligence and we're going to get the answers to the questions that are still looming. So we'll get that. Maybe has been pretty good with getting back to Ms. Pullen quickly. So we'll, we'll provide an update next week. And if we're able to, you know, look at it and, and weigh the pros and weigh the cons, then we'll be able to, you know, give a determination next week. But then we don't we don't have a meeting scheduled next week, but or the week after. Right. So I mean, our, our February the 3rd meeting, mm -hmm. I mean, if we hear anything, you can maybe email Dr. Kane. She could send it to us. But uh, we then could get some um, a more update on February third would be would be. I, I did find it interesting that when I was looking at the, there's a variety of states that do have this um, with public high schools, and um, it seems as if New York, which has extremely stringent um, gun laws, has the most active number of clay target clubs. Mm -hmm. It was that was kind of interesting. Um, and then I looked and just wrote a quick precursory look at the colleges, and there were 34 colleges colleges that have the leagues, and I imagine all of those um, offer scholarships as well. But it was interesting to look into, because I was like, wow, Maryland, not in Maryland yet, but right. um, we certainly wouldn't be pioneer of the states, but so about half of the states currently have them in public schools. And I appreciate, I believe MABE will help us do the due diligence there as well, and just to see if there are any other like states where we can make a good comparison as to how they do it, and then see if it's possible to model after that. Thank you for the update. So we can get this information, you think, at least from Maeve in the next couple of weeks? We're definitely going to push. So uh, yes, I would believe Maeve will get back to us. I think um, the piece that I'm just not sure about is the insurance right. and, and what that additional coverage will look sure. like through the Clay okay. Target League. Fair enough. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Bill. The next thing would be uh, budget review. <laughs> I know, it's nice to see you. It's nice to see you. I might be about that. Oh my goodness. He, you no, know, he's gonna need to come sooner. <laughs> okay. Well maybe we done another hour or Okay. Yeah. I mean depends on the questions, but I understand. Well, I just didn't want to bring him in, but Yeah. Good evening, President Smith, board members, and Dr. Kane. Tonight we bring before you two PowerPoints. The first one is a five-year expense com comparison summary. It's basically looking at the main categories that we currently use, and we can move the slide up, Ms. Wright. Or, can I, I do that here? To, um, it press the arrow, the, the down arrow, because that, there we go. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank That's okay. You. I'm going to try to make it a little bigger. I should have told you. Here's the five-year expense categories that we have. And as you can see, of course, instruction is our highest category in addition to fixed charges. An item that I want to bring to your attention, from 2016 through 2020, each year you see about an increase in total for the, the actual expenses of anywhere between 25 to 3%. So if we fall in that same suit for the trend for FY22, we're looking at needing to maintain what we currently have about a two and two and a half, three percent increase. Is there any questions on this slide? Um, I had a couple. Um, of course. Jane, on the health services, um, there was an 87,000 delta between 20 and 21, which seemed like a big. Um, Delta, because it seemed like it had averaged about 30,000 before that. So I'm just wondering why it seems as if it's three times as much for this next fiscal year. And I could check this, the specifics on that, but I would assume that there was another nurse needed in the school. But I will definitely check on that. Thank you. Um, and then I was wondering why the transportation is up. Uh, it just seems like we should have been saving money uh, instead of... Um, over um, the course of... 
these couple of years, there's negotiated contract agreements with our contractors. Fuel rates could have gone up too as well. But Fuel rates have gone up since salary. when? Because actually they're down. They've been okay. down since. Okay, if you look from 16 on though, okay. but um, other possible increases in transportation would be that negotiated agreement with our contractors. It would be any salary increases okay. both for the contractor, our bus drivers, and then for the school bus drivers as well. Okay. And then on the um, operation of the plant, mm -hmm. up until 2020, the, pri the costs have been going down every year. Um, and then it went... What was it 200,000 just between about 200, 19 000. and 20 and so now it's 80,000 but it's been going down so again what what do we think has caused I mean it yeah, under the operation of jump. plant that's going to be your utilities uh, it's going to be um, any type of custodial related so the increase there could be um, salary related additional positions may be brought on but I can find out the specific okay, just because it's been going down up exactly. until that huge increase in 2020 yes um, and then the fixed charges is it possible to see what the fixed charges are because it's obviously the, the largest portion um, of our cost right and it was averaging it looks like like 120,000 you know, less than a million, but now all of a sudden it's two million from for this fiscal year, um, almost two million that has gone up. That's just a huge increase as well. Okay, so if if I'm looking at it right, uh, for fiscal year 2020, you're at 20.8 million, mm -hmm. and the year before was at 20.7 million. Mm -hmm. Okay, but then we're going for budget year 21. It's um, almost an increase of two million dollars. And we, that's just not even close to the increases we'd had prior. And what could that be? Um, we could have used some reserves. We're part of an ESMEC health trust. So to offset the cost, we could have used some of that reserve in prior years and then not have that reserve budgeted for 21. But I can definitely find out about Great. that too as well. Thank you. Of course. list of questions but I'm going to send them to you in an email that way everybody can see them yeah I have a whole that need to be done here okay. uh, one thing that I um, was asked is if we could do the questions on Google Drive would yes. that be helpful yes and then and then sh share the Google Drive and then put the questions out there and then do we read them the questions in the next session then and answer them yes of course I've got old information from last year are we pretty much doing the same kind of format? Yes. Okay. So you have a question sheet in here. There's a sample of it, so it's in there. Mm -hmm. And, and we'll I just mean, keep it running. I know we have groups and we don't change them, but we're going to be apples and apples and not things changing from one. I mean, it's basically all the same reporting mm -hmm. way. So we can go back to last year's mm -hmm. notes and see what we had to move to this new. This is a sample that we were going to share in Google Drive then, so that way we have the, the date of the question, the question um, from the board member, the answers, and then any possible notes too as well. And this is my first year, so whatever I can do differently, I'm open for suggestions. I'm here to provide any information. Everybody's going to have a different question. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully, you don't answer the same one twice. But I don't know the history that well, but I. I mean, I've just been on this before. There. Yeah, yeah. It's and it takes time for us to understand. A couple of members have been here a lot longer um, to understand. You know how it goes, and you know anomalies are sometimes of what happens in one year compared to the next year. Um, thing, little things that can throw us off. So, at Mr. Smith, this last year the board questions was absolutely wonderful to work with. I mean, this is my seventh year doing budget, and I can tell you. Last year was great because we all saw the questions, mm -hmm. all the answers were there. So, you know, I'm sure, you know, one person, another person has the same question. So this really works well. And then we have it all there in front of us. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much. The next item we have, um, just gathering more information for the budget for your review. Uh, the governor's budget, as you know, was released today. We're waiting on MSDE to, to get um, the preliminary revenue or draft revenues. So we'll provide that for you at the, our next meeting. By next meeting, we know what 
the form, formula is going to be if we're going to get waived on anything or, you know, with because I mean, I'm sure everybody's population is down. It, it, it is. But that's a major concern of mine right now because, you know, just because you have two or three hundred less students, we still have the same classes to teach. It's not like you can just, you know, it's not like pull one out and it fix all. And that's a real concern that if, uh, you know, we can't even stay even. You're right. What I'm preliminary hearing from the CFO group is that no one's going to see a negative impact in, in the state, so there's not going to decrease from the current year. But um, that's just basically what we've been told so, so far. So it's a flat, flat thing is what it was from the same as last year, hopefully. Or uh, we might qualify for some more declining enrollment grant. We might um, hold harmless grant. There's um, other funds that would be available if we saw other decreases in other state aid areas. But right now you don't see a 2 or $3 million reduction because of our students. Uh, they have not told us that, no. So That still has to go through legislation, doesn't it? Hmm? Aren't they putting that through legislation? Or are they handling that budgetary-wise instead? It initially gives through the governor's office in their budget. So he released the budget today, with gives us some preliminary idea on where we're going to be as far as educational funding. But then MSD will release will release it on Friday. Okay. Uh, going on to the budget survey, we conducted a budget survey in January. Emails were sent out to staff on the website and communication. There was 11 questions total. The response was 1,345 in total, of which 65 was parent and caregiver, 28% were employees, and 7% community members. The breakdown as far as children attending Queen Anne's County Public Schools, one child 444, two children 463, and so forth. So more than half either had one or two children in the school system questions that were asked. The next one was budget priorities. They were ranked from very important to least important. The top three that um, were the priorities were high levels of achievement, graduating college, and career ready students, competitive salaries, and small class sizes. The next one was quality of instruction. As you can see that 50% scored above 50% uh, in all of those areas of instruction. The next one was experience and accessibility with uh, instructional materials. Uh, I'd like to point out on this one that the availability of lab equipment ranked the lowest. The highest was access to computer and digital devices. Parent survey responses, adequate career and technology pathways, 65% said yes, 35% no. Uh, adequate additional coursework opportunities, 80% yes, 20% no. And then the last one, do you feel, you'll ch feel your child is educated in a safe and secure learning environment? 92% yes and 8% no. Quality of support services. 50-50 in those categories of health service, guidance, lunch program, breakfast program. Quality of school, facilities and grounds, item of note, classroom furniture seemed to be the greatest need that was identified in the survey, along with repairs and maintenance to buildings. And then the last question that was asked was well, customer. Can I go back to one thing? Of course. The state of repair and maintenance seemed to be a concern of a lot of, I mean, I've been in, a, not recently, but in our schools, they seem, I mean, I know there's aging and everything, but they, don't, they seem to be in pretty good shape. Or is that, am I missing something? Well, no, and our facilities plans show that our buildings are in good shape. Right. Uh, but, you know, if you're in a building every day and, and there's something that consistently is not working, you're going to respond this way. You know, overall, yes, our buildings I mean, are I in just, good shape. I mean, I, when I see that. Some, there are some things that do need work. And, Anything you know, does. we have the prioritized list and we work from that. But I just, I look, we stayed on top of a lot of that stuff. It just seems like, you know, and I've, you know, I've been in some schools and, you know, like be a light out or something here or there. But overall, it's to me, it's been pretty responsive of what our maintenance crews and our people do. To. But, the, but that furniture one, you know, we go through this every year. Yeah. That well, is, we, I think yeah. the tables and the cafeterias, we've been through that yeah. for a couple of years. Yeah. Help. Even the classroom lab. chairs, I was pull say off the screws. It's been on the list for years. Yeah. 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 
And then the final question was a customer satisfaction survey. And then they asked the um, surveyor to rate their satisfaction when interacting with the Queen Anne County Public School staff. And 4% or higher, it was at 81.63%. I'd like to thank everyone who participated in the survey and filled it out. We had a great response. And uh, this, is, this is the highest rate of res um, return since I've been here. Wow. Yeah. The people responding to the to the survey. Mm -hmm. So I, I know last week there was some audio problems. Did anyone have any any questions, or were they going to fill out the questionnaire and I can answer it from there? Well, is it okay if I ask a couple then from the last time? Is it says so the requested new teacher positions that we had? They're each at eighty five thousand dollars. Is how does that break down? It's basically on a calculation. You have to uh, budget for that someone's going to take health care, so that comes into play. For, you, you pick not at the beginning level, but close to the beginning level on the salary scale, and then you add all in your other friends, which is going to be your FICA, your Medicare, uh, unemployment, and then, of course, the health care, which would be a big expense, too, as well. Okay. And then what is a, um, we weren't sure, what is a gateway teacher that was on there for Sudlersville for 60000 What is a gateway teacher? So that's a, <laughs> that's a technology teacher. Yeah, at the Thank middle you. schools. Do they currently share one now? We still have one that is shared between, is it, well, Sudlersville is, is still with the specialist, but which schools are shared, Ms. Bass? Manapeak and Central, uh, Centerville. Centerville. Mm -hmm. With that I know last year and we did you know you did an excellent job moving people around because we were in a in a crosshairs of having to lose a lot of our employees uh, and I think we got that number down and to a reasonable number and then I think the principals and you worked with some people to try to do that but that's a you know we have lost some positions over the last so couple years to try to balance this budget in some times that were you know were hard. Right, so over the last couple of years, we probably have uh, lost about um, 30, close to 30 positions, if not more. Mm -hmm. um, but we have not had to um, dismiss an employee. Some employees, we lost about 19 positions last year. Some employees left on their own, so we were able to, you know, just count that toward the reduced uh, positions. And uh, some employees were moved around, so we were able to do that, and it worked out. Um, you know, we don't know exactly what our budget is going to look like, so we still have, um, you know, to contend with that. But we had about two million that we had to find last year. I, even if things are exactly the same. Uh, we have higher expenses in some areas, and if we have to find $2 million again, in addition to the dollars that we've uh, taken from um, fund balance, then we're, we're certainly going to have to reduce positions again this year. But we, we took money from fund balance last year, and um, even though the teachers were compensated through CARES, there was a furlough day. Mm -hmm. that, so you know, those are two things that have to be put into our budget, and um, with us moving people around so we can stay status quo and not lose uh, employees. And this year is going to be very important not to go too high because it, you know, then all of a sudden at the end, we we're end up losing people, having to make certain cuts. It's not, uh, I don't know if it's the best, I mean, we got to keep your eye on the ball. Each, each member has to sit there and say what they want to do. Looking ahead for February 3rd, we have uh, projected to go over the revenue projections, dive into that fund balance, see what's available and unrestricted, looking at maintenance of effort. We'll look at um, possible cost saving strategies too as well, and then um, sharing preliminary budget book with you as well. Now we'll have our revenue numbers in hopefully by Friday. So at their February meeting, our regular board meeting, we'll have an update on hopefully funding and where we're going to be and some projections there. Then the 10th, 17th, and possibly the 24th will be more uh, work sessions for, I use the line by line stuff that we're start going through the, through the budget. Yes, definitely. And by February the 3rd, all your staff has your report. We'll start with some scenarios, uh -huh. you know, toward the end of the month, we'll start with some scenarios. If we do this, then that. Um, and just continue to answer the questions and, and see what makes but sense. But all the department heads have, have submitted your mm -hmm. 
so they, we're, I mean, you're ready. We're ready to go as far as what we they have all their the wants and needs and yep. whatever. We have all of that. Okay. Um, special education non-public placements. Do we have any age outs that we know? Or not that I know of, but we can definitely find out for you. Okay. Age out on that. Just see if that number moves. Other, other questions that we can yeah. for now? Or? We'll make sure that you have access to the spreadsheet so that you can input your questions and we'll continue to answer using that um, that spreadsheet. <clears throat> and that will go to Mrs. Towers or you so that gets... Well, all of the exec team has exec access team. Okay. to it. Mm -hmm. we so they know to whoever has to answer that question again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Mrs. Towers. Thank you. Mm, thank you. <clears throat> Uh, is there any other? Well, the next thing we have our future meetings. February the 3rd will be our next board meeting, a regular scheduled board meeting. And then on the 10th, 17th, and 24th, we'll have uh, work sessions, which will be budget. Uh, do I have anything else? Any other board members have any discussion or things that we want to discuss this evening? The, just for clarification, on the 3rd, we are having in person public comment. I'm correct? sorry. Yes, we are. Um, we will have uh, uh, February the 3rd, we will have in-person, uh, people can come in and speak to the board, we'll follow all protocols uh, for safety. If you would like to do your thing virtually and send your letter in, please state on it that you'd like it posted as a letter to the board to be posted on our website. I have gotten a lot of emails, and I'm sure like the rest of board members have. Some of them are directly to me, some of them are directed to Dr. Kane, copied the board and everything. As I read some of them, I'm not sure all of them, and there's nothing wrong with any of them. They're all good information, stuff we need, but I don't know which ones would want to be posted and not. I think people need to address specifically that we will post anything. If you cannot make it into our board meeting or feel uncomfortable about coming to our board meeting, please send it to us and we will post it on our website so everybody has it to be, to be reviewed and everything. But um, if you can just do it so I or Dr. Kane or Mrs. Wright or any other board members don't have to make a decision on who we post and who we don't. We can just be clear on that. I think that would help mm -hmm. if all the board members agree to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jackie, the emails that you forward to us from that um, public comment, those all get posted though, correct? Is that automatic? Doesn't automatically get posted. Um, it depends on the content of the email. Okay. Where? Do, what email is that? I mean, I always just, it just says public comment where what is the email for that the, the email is community comments at qacps.org it's on our website thank you and if they put that in there that would be helpful um, because I want everybody has the right to be heard and you know we're and we're getting a lot of emails and I understand it's a very debatable thing on what's going on but you know we, we hear from you I personally as I can speak for the other members they can speak for themselves you know, we're concerned about this and uh, we want to make the best possible decision along with Dr. Kane uh, to do what's best for Queen Anne's County and its students and its staff and it would help to know if it's posted there and in our so it's not a duplicate if it's oh. in our personal emails and it's there and it would probably come to our personal emails but then would in there would say, can this please be posted on the website for at public comment? And some of them, some of them I've gotten have said, I'd like to post it. Only one or two. A lot of them are just, you know, saying one thing or the, either for or against something. Um, and and some of them just have my name. I send some to other people, or some. I'm sure you probably get some without the board's name on them. Although I'm thinking, like Michelle, I, I did see several that said I also sent this here, or I sent it there, and so I was concerned about duplication as well. Um, not sure how we handle that, because I wasn't sure where all it went. Um, oh, I think the board sees every email that's sent to any of us, as far as that goes. Uh, 
I think what I'm trying to clarify is that we will have public comment on February the 3rd. And if you would like to send it in and you can attend or don't feel comfortable attending, that it will be posted on our website. But just if you could put a blurb in there or somehow note it, if you'd like to post it, uh, we will certainly do it. And if we and if you don't see it posted, just set a quick email to myself or any other board member and say, I wish this was posted and we'll get it on there ASAP because um, everybody has a right, like I said, to be heard. And, uh, but, and as we'll see, keep it civil. Okay, anything else for the evening? Mark, do you have a motion to go into executive Yeah, motion to move into executive closed session. Read the, you gotta read the, oh. Thank you, sir. Pursuant to the general provisions article 3-305 and 3-104, I move for the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County to meet in closed session. One, to discuss the performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction. Two, to perform an administrative function. And three, to consult with council. Second. Have a motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Queen Anne's County Board of Education will be moving into closed session. Thank you.